And it's hurricane week here on NBC2. And as we head into the peak of hurricane season, we're trying to help you prepare. I am out on the beautiful, amazingly gorgeous today, Cabbage Key. And you can see I'm standing up a little bit. In the past, Calusa Indians used these shells. I am on a shell mound. And that's how they protected this island and themselves and families from storms. Forecasters today are increasingly turning to AI to help them pinpoint where storms are going. Here's Lauren Hope. Artificial intelligence has referred to a lot of things over the years. The destination is on your left. In the most general sense, it's just human-like intelligence by machines. Uh, but recently, AI almost entirely refers to something called Deep learning. Deep learning teaches AI to mimic the human brain, training machines the way humans learn and think. In the context of weather, uh, that training looks like historical weather data. So typically they, they use uh, somewhere around 40 years of uh, weather data. As meteorologists, we use forecast models daily as a tool to create an accurate forecast. Our traditional models like the GFS or the European use a very different approach than AI. In Conventional modeling, so in the traditional approaches, um, we do not learn from the data, but um, prescribe um, a physical a set of physical rules that um, explains how um, the atmosphere behaves. So, which is better, physics-based models or AI? There's a famous song from uh, the Swedish pop music group ABBA, uh, The Winner Takes It All. And um, I think at the moment we see that um, AI models outperform the um, traditional physics-based models in many standard scores. AI is also cheaper and faster. A traditional model takes several hours to run. An AI model uh, with the right hardware can run in less than a minute. So that's a crazy, crazy difference. I mean, from my point of view, like my my jaw dropped when I saw that. Like, I, I didn't believe it. And it can help us during hurricane season. I've checked the representation of tropical cyclones um, in these models, and we see that uh, we get significant improvements in the prediction, especially if, um, of the track. Take Hurricane Lee last year, for example. Google's AI forecast model GraphCast accurately predicted Lee would hit Canada three days ahead of traditional models. For intensity, there's still a lot of... Uh, yeah, room for improvement, um, which is mainly due to the resolution of the data, which is still too coarse. Um, but in terms of track forecasting, we really see a, um, a big advantage um, if we use forecasts based on um, AI models. And there are challenges with AI, like biases in historical data. I am encouraging skepticism at this point. I think anyone, uh, whether they're a meteorologist or, or just somebody looking at uh, AI weather maps online, uh, to just approach the season, at least this first coming season, um, as a bit of a scientific experiment. And for now, it doesn't seem likely that AI models will replace our existing models. From an operational perspective, I would never drop um, the physics-based models. In terms of like traditional human forecasting, I think it's just going to be another tool that we use to forecast well, in dangerous situations like hurricanes. Um, the human element in terms of communicating and, and interpreting the weather models is, is everything. I would rather, and I think a lot of people would rather tune into their local station and get the forecast that way. Um, when it comes to something that's dangerous to them in their community, uh, then just purely trust uh, an AI forecast. And you can count on NBC2 all hurricane season to keep you informed. In Fort Myers, meteorologist Lauren Hope, NBC2.